Measuring Line Segments In the earlier chapters, we have already studied about the line segment. It is a fixed portion of a line. Hence, it is possible to measure it. The measure of the line segment is called its length. Using this idea, we can compare line segments. We have different methods for comparing line segments. Comparison by observation. We can compare line segments simply by looking at them. For example, here the line segment PQ is greater than AB. But sometimes we cannot be sure about a judgment. For example, in the animation, we cannot be sure which line segment is greater than the other simply by looking at them. So we cannot rely on this method for accurate measurement of line segments. Comparison by tracing Another method of comparing line segments is by tracing. Using a tracing paper, trace AB and place it on CD. Now we can easily tell that CD is greater than AB. Accuracy of this method depends upon the accuracy of the trace. Also, it is hectic to trace a line segment every time we want to compare it. Comparison using ruler and a divider. First, let us know about a ruler and a divider. A ruler is divided into 15 parts, each of which has length 1 cm. Each cm is divided into 10 subparts, each of which is of length 1 mm. Now let us measure the length segment AB. Place the zero mark on the ruler at one end of the line segment, say A. Read the mark at B. It is 5 cm, so the length of AB is 5 cm. Let us draw a line segment AB of length 8 cm. Now let us measure AC. It is 4 cm. Also, BC is of length 4 cm. So we say that C is the midpoint of AB. To measure a line segment by a divider, open it and place the end point of one of its arms at A and the end point of the second arm at B. Now without disturbing the opening of the divider, take the divider and place it on the ruler. Ensure that one point of the divider is at the zero mark of the ruler. Now read the mark against the other end point of the divider. Now let us compare line segments using ruler. Draw a line segment of length 8 cm. Mark it as AB. Draw another line segment of length 10 cm and mark it as CD. Clearly, CD is longer than AB. Angles Right, straight and complete. An angle is the figure formed by two rays called the sides of the angle, having a common end point called the vertex. You must have heard the term such as take a right turn. What do you mean by taking a right turn or particularly a right angle? Consider a boy standing on a crossroad facing towards the north direction. To face the east direction, he takes a left turn. The angle made by him here is a right angle. The shape of a right angle resembles to the English alphabet L. Now if the boy turns to the south direction, he takes another right angle, that is, to go from north to south. He has to take two right angles. This angle is called a straight angle. Now, if the boy again turns by two more right angles, he reaches back to where he was standing originally. That is, he has taken a complete turn. This one complete turn is called one revolution. The angle for one revolution is a complete angle. Look at these rays. These rays form a right angle with each other. Can you think of an example of a right angle? Notice the position of the hour and the minute hands of a clock 
at 3 o'clock. The angle formed between the hands is a right angle. Now we know that two right angles form a straight line. So the hands of a clock form a straight angle at 6 o'clock. Now if we take two straight angles, we get a complete angle. So when the minute hand makes an entire revolution in 60 minutes or one hour, it forms a complete angle. Similarly, if the hour hand makes an entire revolution in 12 hours, we say that it has moved by a complete angle. So, two right angles form a straight angle. Two straight angles form a complete angle. And four right angles are equal to one complete angle. Now, let us consider another example. Consider a wheel with 12 strokes. Here, one-fourth of the revolution makes a right angle. One-half of the revolution, that is, two right angles make a straight angle. Three-fourth of the revolution is equal to three right angles. And one complete revolution is equal to four right angles, which is equal to one complete angle. Angles Acute, obtuse and reflex let us first make a right angle tester. Take a piece of paper. Fold it as shown in the animation. The right angle tester is now ready. Observe these figures. All of these form an angle. Let us compare these angles using the right angle tester. We see that each of the angles formed is smaller than a right angle. Such angles are called acute angles. Also, there are angles which are greater than a right angle, but smaller than a straight angle. Such angles are called obtuse angles. For example, a rooftop, a Chinese fan, etc. An angle which is greater than a straight angle and less than a complete angle is known as a reflex angle. Measuring angles in the above frames, we learned to compare angles using a right angle tester. To be more precise in comparison, we need to measure the angles. The instrument used to measure an angle is called a protractor. Angles are measured in degrees. The number of degrees tells how wide open the angle is. Degrees are marked by a degree symbol. There are 360 degrees in one complete angle. A right angle measures 90 degrees. A straight angle measures 180 degrees. And a complete angle 360 degrees. Now let us measure this angle AOB. Place the protractor horizontally over the line OB in such a way that O and M coincides with each other. Clearly. We can see that the side OA falls on the mark of 50 degrees. So, the angle AOB measures 50 degrees. Perpendicular lines Consider these figures. A table, a book and the English alphabet L. All these figures have two intersecting lines. Note that the angle between these intersecting lines is 90 degrees. Such lines are called perpendicular lines. Therefore, the angle formed between two intersecting lines is a straight angle. Then the lines are said to be perpendicular lines. This is the symbol we use for perpendicular lines. Now if a line segment AB is perpendicular to CD, it also means that CD is perpendicular to AB. Now consider a line segment CD. Mark the midpoint of CD as E. Now take a line segment AB which is perpendicular to CD and passes through E. This line segment AB bisects CD at E which is the midpoint of CD. So we call AB as the perpendicular bisector of CD. Hence if a line segment AB is perpendicular 
to another line segment CD divides it into two equal parts, then AB is called the perpendicular bisector of CD. Triangles Let us recall what is a triangle. A triangle is a polygon having three sides, namely AB, BC and CA and three angles, angle A, angle B and angle C. Triangles can be classified on the basis of the sides. Look at this triangle ABC. All its sides are unequal. We call such a triangle as scalene triangle. Now look at this triangle. It has two equal sides. PQ equals to PR, but it is not equal to QR. So we call this triangle as isosceles triangle. Now let us look at this triangle LMN. All its sides are equal. LM equals to MN equals to LN. This is an equilateral triangle. We can also classify triangles on the basis of angles. Look at this triangle. Each of its angles is less than a right angle. That is, all the angles are acute angles. This triangle is known as an acute angled triangle. Now let us look at this triangle PQR. It has one angle as a right angle. So we call this triangle PQR as a right angled triangle. Again, now look at the triangle LMN. The angle LMN is greater than a right angle. That is, it measures more than 90 degrees. It is an obtuse angle. So a triangle which has one of the three angles as an obtuse angle is called an obtuse angled triangle. Polygon. Take five matchsticks and join each matchstick to each other by one end to other end. The figure we get is a polygon. Hence we define a polygon as a closed plane figure with three or more line segments. The line segments forming a polygon are called its sides. The meeting point of a pair of sides is called its vertex. This polygon has five vertices, namely A, B, C, D and E. Any two sides with a common end point are called the adjacent sides of the polygon. For example, AB and BC are adjacent sides. The end points of same side of a polygon are called adjacent vertices. For example, A and B are adjacent vertices, whereas A and C are non-adjacent vertices. A diagonal of a polygon is a line segment joining the non-adjacent vertices of the polygon. Here in this figure, AC, BD, CE, AD and BE are diagonals. Some polygons with their number of sides are given here. Quadrilaterals Look at these figures. All these figures have four sides. These figures are called quadrilaterals. There are mainly three types of quadrilaterals, namely trapezium, parallelogram and kite. Parallelogram is further of three types, namely rectangle, rhombus and square. A trapezium is a quadrilateral in which one pair of opposite sides is parallel. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are equal and opposite angles are equal. Also, its diagonals bisect each other. A rectangle is a parallelogram whose opposite sides are parallel and equal. All angles of a rectangle are right angles. Also, its diagonals bisect each other and are equal. A rhombus is a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are equal. Diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other at right angles. A square is a parallelogram whose all sides are equal and one angle is a right angle. Also, its diagonals bisect each other at right angles and are equal. 
A kite is a quadrilateral whose adjacent sides are equal and diagonals intersect at right angles. Three-dimensional shapes In the earlier chapters, we have studied about plane or flat shapes which have only two dimensions, namely length and breadth. Now, we will learn about three-dimensional shapes or solid shapes. A solid shape has length, breadth, and a third dimension, that is height. We live in a three-dimensional world. Every object we see or touch has three dimensions. For example, a book, dice, television, water bottle, and so on. Cube Consider this 3D shape. This shape is called a cube. Examples of a cube are a Rubik cube, a dice, and sugar cubes. Each side of the cube is a flat surface called a face. Here we see that a cube has six faces. Two faces meet at a line segment called an edge. There are twelve edges in a cube. Three edges meet at a point called a vertex. Clearly, there are eight vertices. Cuboid This shape is called a cuboid. Examples of a cuboid are a pencil box, matchbox, gift box, and book. Same as in the case of a cube, a cuboid has six faces, twelve edges, and eight vertices. Cylinder This is a cylinder. Examples of cylindrical shapes are a deodorant bottle, a gas cylinder, a water bottle, and a wooden log. A cylinder has two circular faces, one at the top and other at the bottom, and a curved surface. Cone This is a cone. Examples of cone are a birthday cap, an ice cream cone, and a tent. A cone has a circular base and one curved surface. Also, it has one vertex. Sphere This is a sphere. A football, a golf ball, globe and a basket of oranges all are spherical in shape. A sphere has no vertices, no edges and no faces. Pyramid Children, can you tell how a pyramid looks like? Recall the pyramids of Egypt. A pyramid is a shape with a single base and the other faces are triangles. For example, a square pyramid has five faces, one square face, base, and four triangular faces. It has eight edges and five vertices. In a triangular pyramid, there are four triangular faces, one triangular face, base, and three other triangular faces. It has six edges and four vertices. Prism A prism is a shape with two identical bases and the other faces are parallelograms. For example, a triangular prism has five faces, two triangular faces, and three rectangular faces. It has nine edges and six vertices. In a rectangular prism, there are six rectangular faces. It has twelve edges and eight vertices.